Okay, well, it's uh, Thursday, December 10th, 1998, and this is the uh, package sent to me by Ken Cook down in Florida of some mangrove mud. And so I want to just get it weighed out, and uh, I'm going to put it into the 55-gallon mangrove sump and uh, see what we have. Now, he packaged it with the internal bag having small holes to allow oxygen in, but unfortunately, uh, the mail doesn't normally keep uh, packages upright necessarily, and so the package got real wet. You can see there's cellophane covering the box, and that's where our, post, uh, our postmaster <laughs> apparently wrapped it up trying to keep the water from leaking out. Finally, they gave up and put it in this U.S. mail, <laughs> U.S. mail plastic container, which they went back. So I guess the uh, transportation didn't work out that well. Anyway, we're going to get it uh, weighed and then uh, I'm going to take some pictures and then I'm going to um, open it up. Okay, well this is the mud unpackaged and kind of sitting here in a five gallon bucket. Neat looking stuff. It's kind of, it's pretty thin. It's like a silt with some clay mixed in. And I'll try to spoon some out and put it on a on a uh, paper plate and see what it looks like. He packed it in a double bag. There's this white bag material here and then a plastic bag on the inside. And it's pretty dry, but that may be because most of the water leaked out. Uh, it weighed 23 pounds. Uh, with the box and the and the mud and the, and the plastic together, so let's take a look at it. Okay, well this is the material. Kind of hard to see. Very hydrogen sulfide smelling. It's got some dead roots in it here, and uh, it appears to be. You can see a little bit of a plant root there. Um, it's really kind of a sludge and uh, very, very uh, anaerobic and a very strong uh, rotten egg smell. Um, but that may do just fine. That may be just what we're looking for. I'm going to have to put this into the sump and let the sump be disconnected for a few days and then maybe have to do a, uh, a water change to get any toxins that may have been released out of the water before it connected in. And you see there's some like leaves in here. It's like a little leaf right there. So there's all kinds of stuff. I haven't seen anything walking around. But there may be some little crabs and stuff in here if they survived. It did take like almost three days to ship. So that may be because the water was leaking out of it and and the post office didn't know what to do with it. So well down to the sump it goes. Okay, well I've added about half the material to the sump, and you can see it's all cloudy. This has sort of this brown color uh, to the sedimentation in the water. And of course it gets very black at the bottom. The mud itself is real black, and it has a fine silt to it. it looks like it's got some peat mixed in there and some uh, old, old root, little pieces of roots. Didn't see too many leaves, but there are carbon elements in there. And uh, right now, it's it's, it's a bit uh, it does smell a bit uh, hydrogen sulfide. So I'm going to have to take some care in how I introduce this to the system. Right now, if you look up here, I've disconnected. That's the inlet from the main sump, and that's the outlet. I've disconnected the uh, this sump from the main system. And uh, there's a little internal pump, and I'm going to let things settle down. I've got about half of it in there now. The other half is sitting here. You can see it's all that's like a bowl of sewage. sewage. <laughs> um, you can kind of see the material here. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very silty, very fine. Uh, like I say, it appears to have some kind of clay in it, perhaps. But uh, anyway, 
So anyway, this is t equals zero for the experiment. I got the right hand half of the sump has uh, about an inch and a half layer, and uh, the other half uh, can set it in two equal. Looks like two equal bags, or maybe 11 pounds each or so. So I'll put the other half in on the left side after things settle, and I can move some of the uh, the flora that I had on the right. I move to the left, and then I'll move them back over the top of the uh, move it back over the top of the. Uh, the material, uh, the mud, and then I'll fill the left hand half. Uh, got the mangroves sitting here, the right hand set, there's the left hand set, and the right hand I have to take down, they're sitting in the main sump right now. I gotta do something with those. Probably just, uh, probably just set them in here for now. So you see little things floating, little pieces of wood, it's like little pieces of root maybe. Uh, float it up. Uh, we'll let this settle out. I'll take some more pictures. Okay, well, it's been a couple of days since I put the mud in. You can see it's cleared up quite nicely. Uh, the water's a little bit yellowish, although you may not be able to see it in this light. Uh, probably some dissolved organics in there. Uh, zoom in. I, what I did is I made two pockets of mud, one on the right, which represents about a third of the tank, and then one on the, on the left, which you may not be able to see over the top of the, down in here. Oops. Down in this area here. In the middle is, uh, is some rock rubble with some uh, cultural growing on it. So the first set of mangroves here, this set, comes down, sits down on the uh, styrofoam on top of the water. The system has been disconnected. You can see the inlet. This is the inlet from the sump back there, and then that's the outlet back to the main sumps. Those have been disconnected to allow this thing to sit, then take some readings to see if it's going to, and what it's going to do over the next month or so. Down below, uh, Well, you can see the mud flat that sits on top. This is the mud flat here, about uh, two thin fingers wide, about an inch. And then there's uh, dead oolite and agronite down below here, and that's about uh, another inch and a half. And in between is sort of a mixture where the two mix in the strata. Here. That's true on this third and on the other third of the tank on the left. In the, in the middle third, there's just a pile of rocks. So anyway, that's a, sort of an overview of what I did. Uh, while disconnected, the system uh, does have an internal pump back here. Just a uh, Maxi Jet 500 pumping about uh, 500 liters per hour. And a slightly upward position, you can see the rippling of the water here, just to provide uh, some gas exchange. What I do is let this run for a month and see how well things do. You can see the roots, the roots from the uh, mangroves are uh, about an inch or so from touching the substrate. So we'll see over the next month if those, uh, if the support roots, the prop roots, uh, uh, work their way down into that substrate and then uh, uh, what happens from there. And just over the few days, uh, it looks as though the leaves have turned greener um, considerably. I mean, they were uh, light greenish, uh, mostly green, somewhat yellow, and now I see they're turning uh, considerably green. I don't think I get a good shot of one of them here. Um, yeah. You see, that's, that's fairly green. Uh, that leaf there, for example, these both these leaves, whereas they were slightly yellowish. This is after about three days. You can see here the uh, the leaves. All the leaves were like uh, like that, sort of a yellowish green, and now they're becoming uh, more darker green, as you can see in this one. So I assume there's some nutrients there in the water that got uh, picked up. 
and uh, they're now being transported into the uh, into the mangrove, which is good. They need a little uh, a little jolt of nutrients right now. They've been sitting in this uh, almost pure, uh, clean uh, water for some time. Okay, I wanted to show you the the left side of the sump. See, there's some more uh, mangroves there, roots in this group here. What I wanted to show you was some of the stuff that came. You can see there's some roots, little pieces of root-like that have been chopped up while digging this stuff out. Uh, it does have a sort of a dark reddish-brown color. These are the rocks. Uh, put some pieces of Fiji live rock. As you can see, there's little pieces of of roots in there. And there's leaves and all kinds of stuff. I haven't found any uh, macro, macro life yet. I haven't seen any crabs or anything like that. And you see the pump has picked up, the inlet of the pump has picked up quite a few little roots. I assume those are like mangrove roots from where they were dug out. Here you can see the strata a little better. You can see the fine silty, the fine silty, uh, mud on the top, and then down below is pure eulite and agronite, dead stuff, and then in between is this you know, sort of combination layer area where, it, where they tend to mix. And you can see it varies in thickness, uh, the, mud, the mud thickness, so we'll see if that that's a good way to go. I sort of clumped it up See, it has some areas of uh, low O2 and some areas where it's thinner. And we'll see how that works.